we've been using, it applies even if the exponents are negative. And, and that's nice because you, 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 there's really no difference here. It's six times negative seven X to the minus seven minus one power minus two times minus six, just bringing that exponent down, x to the minus six minus one, plus six, bring the minus one down, x to the minus one minus one. The derivative of a constant is, is zero. And, and just to be clear, it, the, a constant times of a variable is different than just a constant on its own. And that's why that last one is zero. Is zero. So we're just gonna simplify the, the um, the expression here, so minus 42x to the minus eight, plus 12x to the minus seven, minus six x to the minus two. Uh, uh, Pearson will accept this, but uh, if you were in a classroom, they, they may want you to write it with positive exponents. That's a big, kind of a big deal in, in earlier math. Um, so your final answer might look something like this, but either of them should be, uh, accepted. I, I, I tend to prefer this one because it's a little easier to write than to, to deal with fractions. Okay, give me just one moment. Sorry, can you explain how you got from that circled answer to, down to the next line? So Again. it's 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 basically undoing what was the first step here, this rewrite step, mm -hmm. where where you you're using this property that says if you have one over x to the n, it's really x to the minus n, and it's just using it in reverse. Uh, so if you have a negative exponent, it's positive when you put it on the bottom. And in our, in our initial part here, the exponent was positive. When we move it up to the numerator, it becomes negative. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. It's more so, of just a visual thing. It's not actually a math. Thing. Okay. It's just presenting it. But you're sure that both are acceptable? Uh, pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. No worries. All right. All right, so this is the uh, this is the next question that that I see. Um, the The question here, like you you will later on maybe think that this is what's called the quotient rule derivative, but you can always simplify before you take a derivative. So you can you can actually divide both terms by x. So in the in the first first position here, you have x to the fifth over x to the one. That's x to the fourth. And then just like in the previous problem, you can you can bring that variable up by um, by changing it to negative. But if, if they're both in the top and the bottom, then you want to simplify. So we've not taken a derivative yet. And I, I tend to use uh, y prime, not dy dx, but but they are equivalent. So the, these these are exactly the same. OK. So it's just power. You're just bringing that four down x and then four minus one is three. Similarly here for this other one, it's minus one. You bring the minus one down, x to the minus one, minus one. And at, depending on your comfort level with signs and, and you know, quick subtraction, you, you, you can actually just do this almost all in one step. Um, but now we just simplify uh, 12 times negative one is negative 12, x to the minus two. And again, kind of like the last problem there, you could alternatively enter it this way but I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll take that form as well. Okay. Okay, great. All right, I believe this is the next question. You can let me know if it is not uh, the right one. So it says find the slope and the equation of the tangent line to the graph at, of the function at the given value of x. So your, your function's over here and they're just giving you an x value. 
So to find, to, anytime it asks for you a tangent line, you have to first determine the derivative. That's, that's why you learn all these derivative rules. So you have to, you have to calculate y prime of, of this thing up here. So the, the first term, x to the fourth, that's, that's 4x cubed minus 20x squared. You bring the two down, you're multiplying 20 times two, it's negative, so that's negative 40x. And then the derivative of a constant is, is zero. Okay, so to get the slope of the tangent line, you take this x value and you plug it in for x. So you're, you're essentially evaluating the derivative at that point. So four times two cubed minus 40 times two. Uh, so this one, this one's quite large, 32 minus 80 minus 48. Sorry, I maybe stopped listening or blanked or something, but where did you get the minus 40x? Uh, that's, that's, so I was, I was, I'm skipping some steps now. Uh, which right, I understand. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's from the, the minus 20x squared. Two times minus 20 is minus 40. And then to the power of one. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, two minus one is one. Um, you know, this is this is something I, I do all the time. So if, if it's unclear, just just keep saying, mm -hmm. you know, ask me about it. Um, the derivative of a constant, the derivative of 64 is zero. That's why there's, there's right. nothing here off to the side. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And then you're just evaluating the derivative at two because it tells you that x is two. Okay. All right. So that's, that's our answer to uh, the first box. Now, the equation of the tangent line, uh, the, the most common form that they teach is point slope form y minus y1 equals your slope x minus x1. You need a point and you need a slope. You, you have a slope. You, you, you know that this is minus 48 for, for m. For, um, for the point, you're actually supposed to put this original value 2 back into the original equation. So you you're finding just the y value, two to the fourth minus 20 times two squared plus 64. So two to the fourth is 16. Two squared is four minus 80 plus 64. And that would appear to be uh, zero. All right, so the, the point is two comma zero and your slope is minus 48. And you're just substituting those values into, into this equation. Uh, so one of the nice things about Pearson is you can you can literally like you could have probably even put this in. I would I would probably uh, go with this one, um, but it needs the whole thing. Okay. The equation of the tangent line. So uh, derivative derivative leads to slope slope leads to writing the equation of the tangent line. Okay, got it. All right, so it says find all points in the graph of f of x where the slope of the tangent line is uh, is zero. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a derivative. So uh, let's let's I'm just gonna rewrite the function six x squared minus twenty four x plus eighteen. So another kind of notational thing: dy dx, y prime, and f prime of x. They're they're all the same. So that just means to take the derivative. So it's it's power rule again. So two times six, that's 12 X because it's two minus one. And then there's really a one here. So it's minus 24. And then one minus one is zero. X to the zero is one. 24 times one is one. But you, you'll get into a habit of seeing like when it's just X, it's just the coefficient. All right. And then the derivative of a constant is zero. So we want we want where the slope which is the derivative to be zero. We want to know where this thing equals zero. So you're solving for x now. And 12x equals 24x equals two. Oh, uh, sorry, ordered pair. So that's why you got to read the instructions here. <laughs> so the x value is two, but we need the y value. So to get the y value, you put that two, two back into the original function. Um, 
then that's I only clued on clued in on that because it said ordered pair there. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring this one down. We're gonna find f of two six times two squared minus twenty four times two plus eighteen. So two squared is a four, so that's twenty four minus forty eight plus eighteen. Uh, what do we got there? Maybe a negative six on that. Um, probably, probably always good to check my calculations if if you got got a got a calculator handy. But sure, <laughs> that 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 is the uh, that is the point. We could also graph this if we were really uncertain, you know. But probably correct. So a lot of like you're going to take a derivative. You're going to take a derivative. You do that in like almost every question. Take a derivative and then do something with it. Any questions on before I move on? Sorry, um, no. Okay. Okay, so now we're learning a, a new derivative rule. So it says use the, the product rule. So there's various different rules. We've talked about the power rule, the derivative of a constant. So the product rule, it's, it's generally put into this form, u and then v. So I'm gonna come off to the side here. u is equal to three x squared plus five and v is equal to 3x minus 5. And then you take a derivative of each. So the, the derivative of this first one is power rule again. So 2 times 3 is 6, 6x. Uh, derivative of a constant is 0. v prime is, is 3. All right. So why do we, why do we need that? Well, the, the derivative rule product rule here if, if you're given something where it's u times v where it's where it's a product it's literally a product okay there's there's a known derivative form which is uh you take you take the first one u and you multiply it by the derivative of the second plus the second v times the derivative of the first okay so so in, in some ways you're, you're pairing these up sort of diagonally You'll see that in the answer space here. So your u is this is this three x squared plus five. V prime is is three. You're just substituting in from this table over here. Plus v three x minus five times u prime, which is six x. Okay. And that's it. That's your answer. Oh. Okay. And what's nice in a, in a classroom, and I, you know, again, I think Pearson accepts this as well. You do not need to simplify. You just throw it in like that. Gotcha. Make sure you get your parentheses in the right places and all that stuff. But um, it's kind of nice. Definitely. Not to have to you know, foil and expand and things like that. Okay, got it. Okay, so it says use the product rule to find the derivative of the following function. And, and they're giving you a hint, they're saying to write it as a product because currently it, it's not a product, okay? And, and as a reminder, when something is squared, that means you, you write it twice. Okay, now, now this one's a little odd because u and v are actually the same, but you still, and this is how they would teach in the classroom, you, you would still come off to the side and write them. Okay, and your u prime is 2t, you just bring that 2 down, derivative of, of a constant is 0, v prime is 2t. Okay, so then if k of t equals u times v, the derivative, which is this next line, that's where you write the product rule, u v prime plus v u prime. And then you're just substituting in what you've, what you've got over here on the right into your table. So that's t squared minus 6. v prime is 2t. v is t squared minus 6. And your u prime is uh, 2t. And that's, that is your, your derivative. So this, this work off to the right helps you to put it into the uh, known equation. OK. Give me just one one. Of course. Sec. Of course.
All right, all good. All right, so the next question moves to the quotient rule. And there's not like an, there's not like a lot of rules, but there's, there's, I mean, I'll, I'll say there's like five in total. Okay. So, so the, it's, it's like a doable thing um, to, and you reuse them throughout the course so that they're worth learning. So the, the quotient rule, quotient rule is, is a U over V. Now, some textbooks use F and G. I, I, my preference has always been U and V. It doesn't really matter. It's probably even better to think of it as top and bottom in terms of like learning the rules, but um, you, you do the same thing. You come over off to the side and you write U, which is the top, V, which is the bottom, and you do the same thing. You take a derivative. So the derivative of U is 12X. The derivative of V is 2X. Okay, and then you just need, and then you just need the, the derivative rule for, for, a, for a quotient. So it's a V U prime minus U V prime over V squared. And, you know, we don't need to know why this works. It's just, this is just what it is. So it's the, the quotient rule is generally very messy and it's, it's yet, a, yet another example of how you don't actually want to, um, you don't want to, um, so even try to simplify. So you take the bottom thing, which is x squared plus three, that's your v, okay? Your u prime is 12x minus u, which is six x squared plus five, and your v prime, which is two x, all over x squared plus three squared. And that's your answer. So in terms of entering this okay. into Pearson, you, you start with the fraction bar generally or, or create the fraction and you just put the, the numerator the numerator in and then the denominator. Sorry, I almost got it. <laughs> yeah, no, take your time. It's important. You know, a lot of a lot of errors occur when entering the answers. Okay. Okay. So the next question is uh, related. It's, a, it's another quotient rule problem. Let me snip it in here. All right, now the, uh, like, like there's a lot going on in the beginning, but it, but it wants the derivative. It says it wants h prime of two, h of x is this f over g. I mentioned that sometimes it's f over g. Um, so, and you don't have to write f of x, you can actually just leave it as f over g. So the derivative, the derivative h prime is bottom g, and this is the same as the previous formula, but just different letters, derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Okay, and, and you'll see you've got a bunch of things here that we're gonna use. So in, in terms of like this problem, because they want it at two, you want g of two, f prime of two minus f of two g prime of two over g of two squared so g of two you just go to the table here it's six these inputs f prime of two is eight f of two is seven i think i'm confused on how you got this the equation above that I'm, I'm just putting two in for like, these are all really, it, it's, it's F of X, G of X, mm -hmm. but for compactness, it's easier to write F and G. Right. Because there's so much writing. So the, 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 the derivative is really G of X, F prime of X, F of X, G prime of X. There's, there's really an X in all of these. 
Okay. But now, but now we're doing it at two. We're saying that x, x is two. Right, because f of two. And, and then we, and okay. then we're, and then we're getting the values from from this 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 given up here. So the, okay, so like normally, normally the derivative is is a function, like it mm -hmm. is in this previous problem. Here it it is a function, but they actually want it at a value. They want you to they want to know what it is when x is two. Okay, I'm almost there. Give me one sec to stare at this. Yeah. So okay. I, like 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 I don't I don't want to write this out you know every time no 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 as, as, and that and that's that's why I'm trying to like shortcut it but it's it's really h prime of x equals g of x f prime of x and 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 then so on f of x g prime of x over g of x squared and and then all I'm doing is putting two in for x for for this mm -hmm. and then and then now we're just grabbing the values from from the given. So we're up to this g prime of two, which is four, just getting that up here. Mm -hmm. And then g of two, if I go back to that, that's that's six. Okay. So we got 48 minus 28 over 36, 20 over 36, uh, 10 over 18, so five over nine. And okay. it's a simplifier answer. Okay, so new question. Uh, this is not even. This is not a calculus question. It's it's asking you to do this. What's called a composition. And and maybe you remember that was like f bubble g of x, which is really f of g of x. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you yeah. and if, and if you were an algebra or algebra, whatever that wherever this is taught the first time, you, you start here. So you need to find g of one. Well, thankfully they give you an equation for g of x. They tell you that g of x is three x plus one. So you're gonna put one in for x. Three times one plus one is four. That's okay. it? Okay, nope. no. There's a little bit more, a little <laughs> bit more. So you, so you take the output you take the output and you plug it back into f. So, mm -hmm. so you now want f of four because that's your output. Your output becomes the input to the next one. And so, you know, again, thankfully you've got an f of x. Your f of x is two x squared minus two. So you're putting four in for x. Two times four squared minus two. Four squared is 16 times two is 32 minus two is 30. Beautiful. But the idea is you're given an x. Here's your f of x. You have an output that goes to g of x. And that's your, your final, final answer. OK. Uh, just double check for, so, yeah. OK. Okay, so another find, just plain old find the derivative of the function. Uh, this is a, what's called a chain rule question. And, and if you think of a chain, a chain has links. The, the links um, combine various rules. Uh, so we're gonna use another substitution. We're actually gonna do the following. We're gonna let u equal nine x to the fourth minus four x squared plus six. And so our original function now is y equals u to the fourth. Okay, so okay. Just, just rewrite that over here. Okay. Now, the derivative, if this were an x, pretend like 
pretend like this is really an X, the derivative would be 4U cubed. You bring the four down, you subtract one, mm-hmm. so on, but it's not X. And that's, that's, that's where this chain rule comes in. Because it's not X, because U is really defined as something else, there is this added chain rule derivative off to the side that you have to have to account for. Okay. Now you might say, well, hey, Matthew, didn't we like, why didn't we do that before? Well, we did, we did. And let me show you that off to the side here. So let's say, let's say it was truly Y equals X to the fourth. Y equals four X cubed times the derivative of X. This means derivative, not X to the one. What is the derivative of X to the one? It's, or the, cause that's what's inside here. It's just one. So you've actually been using the chain rule the entire time. It's just that this, this part that you're multiplying by has been one up until now. And when you multiply by one, it doesn't change anything. So okay. that's, about, that's about the shortest explanation I can give of the chain rule um, <laughs> that, that may, may or may not be helpful. But um, in terms of like mechanics, you have to take the derivative of this thing over here to the right. So four times nine is 36 X cubed. 2 times 4 is minus 8x, okay? And then you just fill in the pieces. You, you back substitute. So your derivative is in terms of x. You have it right now as u. So it's 4 times u cubed. But instead of u, you write 9x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 6. That's the u to the power of 3 times 36x cubed minus 8x. Okay. And that is it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I got bits. Yeah, it it uh we'll see if we get another one here. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd probably need to see that one again, but that's okay. So, so in, a, in a traditional classroom, you would you would probably spend an entire lecture on like chain rule, and, right? And a much simpler example before we went to that one. But, Sorry, you mind going up? I'll just take a picture on my. Oh, I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. Now you're good. All right. So the uh, like. This is a very hard thing for most calculus students, first time calculus students like this U, U business and Vs and substitutions and all that. Um, I mean, I'm obviously shortcutting this for you by, by giving you the, um, the substitution. So um, this can be written, written as minus three, nine X cubed plus five to the minus four power. And, and all we're doing is move it, when we move it up from the bottom to the top, we just change it to being, to being um, a negative exponent. Is that okay? Um, no, honestly, sorry. Okay, so that we did that, we're gonna go back up here. We did that in uh, one of these very early questions. So, so just like here, X to the seventh became X to the minus seven, X to the sixth became X to the minus six. You, when you move gotcha. it up, you move it up, it, it, it changes sign. Yep. So, gotcha. okay. So, so this is just a rewrite. I'm not, there's no calculus, it's just a rewrite. And right, in some right. ways it's just algebra. Now I can also do the following. I can, I can change it to minus three U to the minus fourth. I have for, just one question before you move on. Yes. The sign of the nine X to the third plus five, does that not become negative? And that, that just, that whole... the, just the exponent. Okay. Only the exponent changes. Is there like a short explanation as to why? Uh, it, well, not really. Okay. <laughs> these, these are just exponent properties. So mm-hmm. the the ones like you would when you saw these the first time you learned them the the instructor started out. Let me let me go down this down here. Um, let me actually grab that. So they that you you learn something like this. You learn like like two times two times two is two to the third. 
Okay, mm -hmm. that, and that's one of the properties. Um, but then when you when you when you got down to like, well, what is what is one over two cubed? Well, it's it's one over eight because two times two is eight. And then we we threw in well, what is what is two to the minus three power? And we said, oh, well, that's one over two cubed. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 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 then th that produces this general rule that if you have x to the minus n, it's one over x to the n. But more generally, it's it's the thing in parentheses to the minus n becomes the thing in parentheses to the power of n. And so that is, so th th this is not an explanation. I'm just showing you the rules. But the the base doesn't change sign. In this case, mm -hmm. the the thing in parentheses the x is the base. It does not change sign. I see. Yeah, they, there gotcha. is a, there is another explanation, but not you know not of one we can really go into. So the mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're saying okay, well let's let you let's let you be this thing in parentheses, and that's pretty common. You is generally the the thing in parentheses. It's the thing under the root. It's the um, exponent uh, if it's a complicated one. Uh, so the, you tend to like pattern like what the u should be and then just like before you need you need u prime mm -hmm. so, so you're gonna need this it's 27x squared um now i need to move some of this down try and do that okay yeah now we're gonna for so the the derivative we go back here to the left like like think of the left as your 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 this is like your on the right, so your your work you're showing off to the side, and the left's kind of like your 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 problem. The derivative is you take the exponent, multiply it by the coefficient, and then you subtract one from the exponent. So we would be done if this was x. If, if u was really x, we would be done. But since it's it's a chain rule, because u is really a function of x, you have to multiply by u prime. Okay. Right, and then and then from here, all you're doing is back substituting for u nine x cubed plus five to the minus five power. U prime is twenty seven x squared. And that's your final answer. Okay. All right, so new question. Uh, so we, we did a bunch of just like straight, like take the derivatives. Now we're going back to find the equation of the tangent line. So the tangent line requires the derivative. So we're not getting out of that, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna do some things with it when, when we're done. Okay, okay so the, the, uh, the first thing is, is this f of x equals the square root of x squared plus 55 uh, we're going to do a couple of things here. So we're going to we're going to first let u be x squared plus fifty five. So this is now f of u square root of u. The next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to remind you that when it's the square root symbol, it's really u to the one half power. No okay. calculus yet. We've not done any calculus. We just sort of made some substitutions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now we're going to take a derivative. F prime of u is you bring the exponent down. You subtract one from the exponent. OK, and then this last little piece, because u is really defined in terms of x, you have this u prime. So this becomes u to the minus 1 half power. Mm -hmm. times u prime. And then we're going to substitute uh, u and u prime back in. So u prime, which we didn't calculate yet, power rule, derivative of x is 2x. 
right, I'm sorry, derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 55 is, is 0. Okay, so now we can go back to x. It's 1 half x squared plus 55 to the minus 1 half power. And then u prime is 2x. I'm just substituting uh, those values back in u and, and u prime. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, now we have the derivative. The derivative gives us the slope. The slope requires a point. So we're gonna take this three and plug it into the derivative. So up until now, we've, we've treated the problem just like the past few, but now we're gonna actually evaluate the derivative at three. So it's one half, three squared plus 55, to the minus one half power, two times three. Okay, so the uh, this is one half, 64 to the minus one half power times six. Um, and you're allowed to use a calculator, uh, but this, this if you want the, this becomes one over the square root of 64, if you, if you need that simplified. Sorry, where'd you get the three that you're plugging in? Right here, up at the top. You can see my cursor. Oh yeah. Um, they have to give that to you. That, no, like, no, I, I understand. I actually just realized that this is a changed uh, question. I have different values for this one. Oh no. Um, just, yeah, just just by a little bit, like the X, that's that's fine. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, we have time if you want to send them over. Um, yeah, so it's just basically, it's not plus 55, it's plus 33 and then X equals four. Okay, so the only, the only thing that that changes is, uh, I mean, I'll just, it's, it's down here. It's four. literally down there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, uh, so, um, but it does change, you said four? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's now 49, it's does 64. So that's one over the square root of 49. It was actually kind of nice, but now it's not. So the, you, <laughs> <laughs> this is right though, x squared plus 33. Yeah. X equals four, mm -hmm. okay, All right. Um, so because this is now eight, eight divided by two is four, but this is four over seven. Mm. And it, but it, that's fine. So that that's your slope, okay. Um, now, if we use this y minus y1 equals your slope x minus x1, the slope is four sevenths. Your x is four, because that's given. To find the y, the y1, you have to put this four back in. You have, to, you have to do the square root of four squared plus 33, which is square root of 49, which is seven. So this is y minus seven equals this. It wants you to it wants you to solve for y, so you just you just add the seven to both sides. Four over seven x minus four plus seven, and that's your that's your final answer. Okay. Are there other ones that have changed? I, mean, you, I know, right? That's what I'm. Uh, we can go through them one by one. Um, do you want to go up to, from the top, and I can just scan it? Really yeah, quick. of course, wanna, of course. Yeah. So here's here's the uh, here's the first one. That one's fine. Okay. Here was the second one. Yeah, that's good. Uh, this is the third one. That one's good. Yeah, good. Is this one okay? I'm sorry. Yep. No, okay. yeah, that one is good. Okay. And this the product rule is the next one. Yeah, good. Good.
good. Yeah, yep, that one's oh, good. Yeah, okay. Also good. Good. Yep, good. Except for that one. Yep, yep. They're all yeah. good. So you know I was paying attention. <laughs> I was yeah, like, where'd no, the three come from? <laughs> yeah, the, the, that's good. Uh, all right. Do you want me to uh, reschedule your next hour for next Thursday? Um. Yeah, I know. I I scheduled two hours and and obviously then went to send you the material. I was like, well, God, it's 13 questions. I'm like, it keeps getting lower and lower every week. There, there will come a time where it's going to take a lot longer, but um, I'm happy to just move it to next uh, Thursday at like one. Does that work? Uh, sure. Yes. Let me put okay. that in my calendar. And it's the same. Um, it's the same e uh, booking. So whatever you had for three o'clock, you'll use next Thursday at one. And are, okay, what what time zone are we talking about? One o'clock, uh, Arizona, Arizona, okay. time, Arizona. Yeah, uh, if that's okay with you. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, are you available? Like, is it on your website already? If I went and booked like the two p.m. Yeah. So I uh -huh. the, it just uh, as an aside, yeah, I, I made it so that you could book one week out. Like, if you wanted the exact same time you could go in today and see next Thursday at 2 p.m. available Arizona time. Okay. 